This is the Right Now Podcast with Sarah Werner. Episode 74, Getting Back into Writing. Welcome to Write Now, the podcast that helps all writers, aspiring professional and otherwise, to find the time, energy, and courage you need to pursue your passion and write every day. I'm your host, Sarah Werner, and it's been a long time since I last wrote anything. Well, let's clarify. Technically, I've been writing a lot lately. Emails, responses to emails... Responses to the responses to emails. And, you know, outside of the world of emails, I've been writing copy for my course. So some of you may already know, I'm launching a course about podcasting called Podcast Now. And I've been writing all sorts of marketing materials and emails, of course, and social media posts and content for the course and just So much stuff. I've been writing so much lately. But in another way, I haven't been writing. Because for me, in my world, there are different flavors of writing. There's different types of writing. And in my brain, I sort of divide them up between obligatory writing and exploratory writing. Or, you know, in other words, writing for other people, which is an obligation, and writing for myself to explore my thoughts, to process what's going on in my big, messy brain, to release some of the creative energy that gets built up. And they're different. Anyone who either writes for a hobby or writes professionally can tell you writing an email for work might not bring you the same joy as sitting down and working on your novel. I mean, if you want to break it down even more, you can just say there's writing that is fulfilling and writing that is less fulfilling. Writing that drains your energy and writing that imbues you with energy and feels good and fulfilling to write. So lately, I've been doing a lot of obligatory writing. That's not for me. It's for my business, but it's not for my heart. And it sounds like there should be an easy fix to this issue, right? Sarah, just sit down and write something for yourself. Maybe you're thinking that right now. Like, what the heck, Sarah? You know, you have that time uh, when you're sitting up in bed before you go to sleep and you're reading or you're I don't know. What, what are you doing, Sarah? Are you scrolling through Twitter again? Sarah, stop scrolling through Twitter. Seriously, it's not doing you any favors. You should be using that time to write creatively. Like, what's wrong with you? Or maybe you're on the receiving end of this. And you know what it's like to feel the weight and the guilt and the buildup of creative writing you haven't done and you find incredibly difficult to get back into. That's what we're talking about today. Maybe you haven't written creatively or for yourself or whatever fulfilling creative writing or creating means to you. Maybe you haven't done that in a while and you don't know how to get back into it. Because once you haven't written or created in a while, I feel like this barrier gets built up. And the barrier is different for different people. So the barrier could be guilt, or it could be thinking, boy, ah, uh, I haven't written for the last six weeks. Uh, I shouldn't start now. I'm not ready or I don't feel like I'm ready, or I'm afraid that what I write won't be good enough to be the first writing that I'll have written in six weeks. Or maybe I'm afraid it'll be terrible, or that I'm rusty, or simply that I won't have anything to say. Maybe my creative well has dried up. Or 
Maybe you think of creative writing as an indulgence. Maybe you think of it as a special treat. And you haven't done it for a while, and you don't necessarily feel like you've earned it. You don't feel like you deserve it. You feel like you don't deserve this chance to, quote unquote, indulge yourself. Maybe you're withholding that joy from yourself. So whether you're feeling scared or guilty or just plain overwhelmed, (laughs) You know, maybe you're overthinking it because we do that sometimes. Maybe you just have a lot going on. Maybe you don't have the energy right now to create for yourself. And you know what? That's okay. I've talked before on this show years ago. If you go back and listen to, oh my gosh, the old buildup of old episodes for this show, I talk about all of the reasons that we don't write. I even think that that's maybe even the first episode of the Right Now podcast is called What's Keeping You From Writing. So go back and listen to that. And actually, quick side note, I've had a few listeners tell me they can't find episode one of the Right Now podcast on Apple Podcasts or whatever they use to listen to podcasts. So if you're having trouble finding episode one, uh, go over to sarahwerner.com. That's S-A-R-A-H-W-E-R-N-E-R. And navigate through the Right Now podcast episodes. And you should be able to stream it from there. Okay, sidebar over. The practice of not writing compounds upon itself. So if it's been a while since you last wrote, and whether that's been by choice, by circumstance, uh, or just because you literally have not been able to write, maybe you're caring for a sick relative, maybe you have a newborn child, maybe you've been unable to pierce that veil of fear or overwhelm or undeservedness or unworthiness. Whatever the reason, whether you've chosen it or not, you haven't been writing. And that happens. That's okay. That's normal. That's life. I know that a lot of writers will say, oh, I write every day no matter what. And there's this implication that if you don't do that, you're somehow not a real writer. And that is a load of garbage. You can take six weeks off. You can take six years off. You can take six decades off and still be a writer. You can't lose that. It's part of you. It's part of what drives you. And nobody can take that away from you with their own made-up rules about who qualifies as a writer and who doesn't. The fantastic news is... You don't ever lose that creative spark. That's part of you. That's part of what makes you you. It's part of who you are. It can get buried. It can grow a little dimmer. But it will always be there waiting for you. It will always be there. It's there right now. I don't want to put any undue pressure on you to write right now. I just want to let you know that if you want to, you can. Those walls that we've put up, the the overthinking and the I'm not good enough and the unworthiness, the fear, the thought that it's maybe too indulgent, the fact that we're for some reason or other withholding it from ourselves, even though we know it will bring us joy and fulfillment. That wall is an easy wall to overcome. And I'm going to share why. It's because writing, at its core, writing, the act of writing, is a very simple act. I know that we conflate it and get it caught up in all sorts of other stuff. Like, I know writing isn't easy. Good writing is not easy. We get it mixed up with all sorts of stuff. And so the fears that I talked about earlier, the feeling of overwhelm, the feeling that we don't deserve to sit down and take time for ourselves and create, 
the thoughts of, oh, maybe this metaphor doesn't work after all, or what is a metaphor? I don't really understand. Or I wonder if I'm spelling this right. Or is this character really three-dimensional? Or I'm tired and I don't have any energy. Or et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot of that. And that's all part of our wall. But when you strip all of that away, the act of writing is the simplest thing in the world. You pick up a pencil, a pen. You touch the pencil or the pen to a sheet of paper. And you make little marks on this pressed sheet of dried out wood pulp. Or if you're a typer, you turn on your computer or you open up your laptop and you start pressing the keys. That is the act of writing. Little components of the alphabet going on to your blank screen. Now that's, again, without the overthinking, without the fear, without all of the stuff that tangles us up and keeps us from writing. I had to do this recently myself, and as I did it, I dissected mentally what it took and what it meant. So what I mean by this is... Some of you who listen to this show know that I have another podcast, and it's called Girl in Space, and it is a sci-fi podcast. It's fictional, which means that it is scripted. It uh, has voice actors, and it has sound effects and music, and it's sort of like an audiobook, and it's in 13 chapters, essentially. And I wrapped up episode 13, the final episode of season one. It took me eight months to write because of a million different reasons, which maybe you can identify with. And I released that final episode in August 2019. Now, if you're listening to this episode right as it comes out, it is coming out in December 2019. And up until this week, I had not written creatively or for myself since... I released that final episode of Girl in Space four months ago, over four months ago. So all of this stuff that I'm telling you right now about getting back into writing, this is a process that I went through earlier this week. And honestly, the only reason I decided to sit down and try to write something after four months is not because I finally got over the fear or the overwhelm. I'm not magical. Like, I, <laughs> I, I'm not better than you in any way. I don't have something that you don't have. Well, I had one thing. I had a deadline. You see... I agreed to do a live show of Girl in Space this upcoming April 2020 in Seattle. And it was uh, indiegogo I don't know if you can say that in the same way that you say Kickstarter, but we had an Indiegogo for it. And one of the rewards is a never-before-heard bonus episode of your show. So there's a whole bunch of shows that are doing this together. Uh, Girl in Space, Moonbase Theta Out, Ninth World Journal some other shows. And we all had to have our episodes written and fully produced by a certain date. And it got to the point where I was past that date. Everybody else had written and recorded their bonus episodes, except for me. I hadn't even started writing it yet. Because reasons, all of those reasons, I hadn't written in a while. I was afraid I would be rusty. I was afraid that what I would write would be disappointing. I was afraid that I couldn't live up to the stuff that I had written before. I was afraid that I didn't have a good enough storyline that would make my listeners and the donors to this campaign happy enough. I was afraid I had lost my creative spark. But I was starting to get very polite but very anxious emails and messages from the other people in the Indiegogo who were like, uh, hey, uh, you know, no pressure, but uh, that episode of Girl in Space is due, like yesterday. Everyone is motivated by different things. 
Some people are motivated by something internal. So they want to finish a project or they have a drive or they really want to publish their book or they just really want to feel the joy of creating and writing. Other people are externally motivated. <laughs> uh, like me. And so the thing that got me writing, the thing that motivated me to write this bonus episode was knowing that if I didn't, I would have a lot of people who are very angry with me for not holding up my end of the deal. For me, it's the thought of letting people down or having people be disappointed or angry with me. Again, everybody is motivated by different things, so this might not motivate you at all. But understanding what motivates you can be a powerful incentive to getting back into writing. And honestly, if it weren't for that fear, that discomfort, that unthinkable thought of letting other people down... I don't know. I don't want to say that I never would have written again, because that's just not true. But I'd gotten into a groove where I was very comfortable not writing. It was very easy for me to dismiss the urge. Uh, I've gone four months without writing. What's another day? You know? And even the thought of, wow, if I start writing today, then I'm going to have to write every day. And that's not a practice I'm going to be able to keep up with where I am right now. So why bother starting? If you're asking yourself that question right now, the answer is because it's important. Earlier, I told you that creative spark, that drive to create and write, that's part of you. It's part of you for a reason. You have words to share. You have a story to tell. You have many, many words to share and many stories to tell. And I know that sometimes it's easier to hide. It's easier to ignore. It's easier to preoccupy yourself with other things that are actually important. Everything is important. Taking care of other people, feeding your kids, going to work, answering those work emails. But what I found when I sat down to write that bonus episode of Girl in Space was something I had forgotten I was missing. It was like stretching out a muscle that I hadn't used that had started to atrophy. Like, oh yeah, I, I have this and I should take good care of it. I should exercise it, I should use it. And I've talked before about using the word should so that's a really delicate topic, and I don't say that lightly, but instead I'll say I can use it. I will use it. Sitting down to write that bonus episode of Girl in Space was hard. I said earlier in this episode, writing is not easy. It's simple. It's very simple to put words on paper or to type words onto a screen. That act is simple. There's not a lot of ingredients to it. It's just you and the tool and the words. It's simple, but it's not easy. Writing this bonus episode was hard. Getting back into writing is simple, but it can be hard. And the degree of difficulty is probably going to vary from writer to writer. Maybe for you, what's hard is actually sitting down and giving yourself the time and the space to do it. Maybe it's battling all of those fears and insecurities and feelings of worthlessness. Like, that's legit hard. Maybe for you, what's hard is, and this is what I found, sitting down and getting those words out and realizing those words really suck. <laughs> Yeah, there is such a thing as being a little bit rusty or a lot rusty. And getting those words down requires a very delicate act of excavation from all the garbage that's built up in your brain. But you know what? Despite how difficult and frustrating it was, writing down those first few terrible words was a relief. 
like exercising an unused muscle. It was painful at first, but then my body started to hum and sing with the joy of the task. I found myself saying, oh yeah, I love this. I made this for a reason, because I love creating stuff. That's the thing that nobody tells you. That writing is very simple, but very hard. We kind of treat it like it should be like a video game or like getting together for coffee with an old friend. Like, oh, you jump in and it's fun and easy the whole time. No, it's hard. But we need to do it. You need to do it. I felt so much better when I got back into writing. Again, it was frustrating, but it was good. It's a little bit of a paradox. I started, and I felt better. It's that simple and that hard. So whether you've been away from writing, by choice or not, whether it's your circumstances or your job or your energy levels, you can always go back. You can always write. That skill will never go away. It might atrophy a little bit, but it will never go away. It'll always be there, waiting for you, waiting to bring you joy and fulfillment. So if you're one of those people who is internally motivated, maybe you're just like, yeah, I'm going to go write something right now, and that's awesome. But if you're one of those people like me who finds that wall a little bit more difficult to tear down just internally, um, I have homework for you. Yes. I, Sarah, have homework for you. Your homework is either today or tomorrow. I want you to set a timer. It can be on your phone. It can be a kitchen timer. It can be on your watch. Whatever it is, set a timer for five minutes. Yeah, that's it. Just five minutes. I mean, it can, it can be more if you want, but I know a lot of us are busy and overwhelmed and five minutes is realistic. And when you hit go on that timer, when you start the timer, I want you to do something that is very simple. I want you to take a writing implement and touch it to a sheet of paper and begin to create words without judgment, okay? Okay. They can be terrible words. You can just write the word the over and over again until something better comes to mind. You can even doodle. You can draw a little stick figure with a happy face or a sad face. <laughs> or again, if you're a typer, open up that laptop. Open up a fresh document. Heck, you can even open up an email like a new email, if that's what you're used to writing in lately, and if that's where it's easy for you to write, open up a new email and start writing words. Start typing. Put those characters onto the screen. Do what is simple, and soon you'll be able to do what is hard. I have a lot of people in my life who I need to thank for helping me do this whole podcasting thing. This is probably its own episode in and of itself, but I have a wonderful support system in place. I have a wonderful group of people who encourage me and send me love and warmth, and I, I hope that I'm able to, in some way, project some of that to you. So I want to thank all of those amazing people, my husband, Tim, my siblings, Rachel Harrison and Rebecca. My mentors, Rebecca Weiner McGregor, Melissa Johnson, my friend Joanna, my friends Jordan and Anthony, and Sean. I also want to thank my incredible Patreon patrons. So these are the people who help support me financially. This show is free to access for everybody, but it's not free for me to make. And so these wonderful people give a dollar per episode, two dollars per episode, ten dollars per episode to keep hosting costs down and to keep the show running. So these wonderful people, some of whom I will name right now, are Amanda Dixon, Julian Vincent Thornburg, Michael Beckwith, Selena Zhang, Maria Alejandro. 
Leslie Duncan, Gary Medina, and Sean Locke. You are part of my support system, and I am so grateful for you. If you would like to be one of the amazing, beautiful patrons who support me financially for, again, a dollar per episode or more, you can just go to the show notes for this episode, which hopefully are available wherever you're listening right now. You can go to the show notes there. You can go to sarahwerner.com and navigate to this episode and click support the show on Patreon. Or third option, you can go out to Patreon. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash Sarah Ray Werner. So all one word, that's S-A-R-A-H-R-H-E-A-W-E-R-N-E-R and click support the show. Your financial appreciation lets me know that what I am doing is important to you. So thank you so much, those of you who do decide to support the show. What else can I tell you? (laughs) Oh, yeah. Um, Those of you who are listening and don't know about Girl in Space, I do have a fictional show that you can listen to for free. Uh, It's called Girl in Space, and it's about a girl in space. Basically, there's this young woman who has been seemingly abandoned on board a research station in the outer reaches of space. You're not sure why she's there, how she got there, or what happened to the rest of the people on board. All you know is that she's alone and there is a light steadily drawing nearer. So you can check that out. Just type in Girl in Space into Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever it is you're listening to this podcast right now. Uh, It'll be there. You can enjoy it. The full first season is available to listen to if you want to get a taste for what my writing is like. And if you've ever wanted to start your own podcast, if you want to do a non-fictional one like this one, or if you want to do a fictional podcast like Girl in Space, I am launching my course. The course is called Podcast Now, and you can get a taste for what it will be like by going to sarahwerner.com. That's my website, S-A-R-A-H-W-E-R-N-E-R.com, and click on Free Podcasting Webinar. So I'm not going to sell you the course here or anything, but if you want a free webinar about podcasting and about how to start and the three mistakes that most people don't know they're making when they start a podcast and how I got started and how I make money from it, uh, all of that good stuff is in my free webinar. So there's no obligation or anything. You just go to my website, click the button, and it'll have you sign up for a time that works best for you. So make sure you do that. Podcasting And I explain this in the webinar to in a more detailed way, but podcasting is the whole reason that my writing career took off. So it's a great medium. It's a great place to be right now. Uh, So do, do check that out if it in any way seems interesting. And with that, this has been episode 74 of the Right Now podcast, the podcast that helps all writers, aspiring professional and otherwise, to pursue your passion and write, even if it's not every day. See, this that's how this show evolves. I went from, uh, hey, you should write every day to, hey, you don't need to write every day to be a writer. So we all grow, we all change, and it's amazing. I hope that you've enjoyed this episode, and I hope that you take your homework assignment seriously. So set that timer for five minutes and do something very, very simple. Write. 